Okay, I'm Stefan Schanstrom from Susquehanna, and I'm going to talk about what's my object, and the noises in the background are courtesy of my kitten. So first I need to, there we go, have some disclosures out of the way, and systems in computing these days generally are lots of communicating tasks. If we get it right, they all talk to each other, but talking to each other means that we have to have messages. And in a real system, that can be hundreds, if not thousands of different message types. So how do we represent those messages? Well, since C++ 17, we've had a vocabulary type, std variant. And the problem with std variant is that we don't have a control as a user over the serialization layout on the wire for it. So if we send a message from an ARM box running Linux to a Windows box on IA32, we're probably not going to be happy. Also, there's an awful lot of boilerplate code involved in std variant. And that means that we have to auto-generate huge files. And whilst auto-generation is a really, really good thing, when your file reaches over a million lines of code, just the compile time alone is staggering. And as we know, std visit is just everything that's wrong with modern C++. So we could try doing the C way with the good old discriminated union. And what, we still have to generate all those millions of lines of header files, because now we have to wrap everything in classes and so forth, yada, yada. But the big problem with the discriminated union is that the size depends on the message maximum message size of a message, not the actual message size. Now, normally, most messages are fairly short, 10 to 20 bytes maybe, but there's guaranteed to be one that's going to be humongously big that occurs once a day, and it could be a megabyte or two. So that doesn't work. And as Bjarne showed in his keynote, there's active research going on as to how to generate individual messages in the same manner. And one way that's fairly common is just to examine bytes one at a time. But the problem is that that's fraud. It leads to a whole mess of aliasing violations that are just undefined behavior, and we'd rather not go there. But there was a paper, P593, that really helps in this. Um, Basically, what it enables is that it says that for a set of magical functions, such as memset, if you reinterpret cast into that buffer, it's as if the object that you're reinterpreting to already exists in that spot, which means that we can pull out our message header straight out of a plain byte buffer, and we're perfectly okay. We can inspect into the object, it's defined behavior, everything works. The problem is, as soon as we try to make sense from that header type and go to a different type for the message, nah, all bets are off, we're back in point aliasing, and we're now in undefined behavior land. So yes, we could reinterpret cast the, from the size, known size of the header into the rest of the buffer, but now we have to know how far into the buffer to go, and it it's fraught. So reinterpret cast on its own, aliasing, undefined behavior. My kitten has now had puppies, and we're off. Um, the risk stood bit cast, but that's really no use because it requires that the from and to types are equally sized, and that's not the case with generic messages, so can't use that. Well, there is a missing piece. 593 had two sections. There was the language piece, which got accepted into C++20, and there is a library piece, which has a magical function that's now called start lifetime as, was originally known as bless, and, but it didn't quite make it into C++20, and I wasn't in the room, so I don't know why, but I'm guessing just time. Um, the issue here is that it occurs in a two-bit determined paper for the wording. So until that paper exists, we're left stranded. Uh, but we're almost there. As long as the types involved are trivially copyable and has implicit lifetime, 
start lifetime ads will work for us. And with a little bit of extra work, it'll even do magical things with map-like containers and other special cases. For details, see P593. Thank you.